let's move on and start swiftly with the first session of the day, where IB Europe's Privacy and Compliance Manager, Nino Wagner, will be joined by a panel of experts to discuss the evolution of our transparency and consent framework. Uh, this panel will discuss the latest version of uh, TCF v2.0, which I'm sure most of you are very well aware of, and its market adoption. It will also explore how it is set to evolve with developments like connected TV and how the industry needs to support and evolve the framework going forward. So Nino, bonjour and uh, over to you. Bonjour. So thank you for the introduction and uh, welcome to this discussion dedicated to the transparency and consent framework. So TCF was launched as a cross-industry standard three years ago to facilitate compliance with certain provisions of the e-privacy directive and the GDPR. And over the past years, TCF has evolved and keeps evolving to take into account um, DPA guidelines, uh, recommendations and case laws. And as the industry is now facing uh, new regulatory challenges and technical disruption, I am joined by five speakers today who are active participants in the TCF instances and to discuss the future of the framework and its market adoption across the EU. So I'm going to start with a quick roundtable to let them introduce themselves. And Julia, over to you. Hi, Nino. I'm Julia Sala. I am a lawyer, so uh, my role here is to be the boring one, probably. TCF here in Italy is, has been very promoted by YAB Italy, and I am honored to be here also on their behalf. Thank you. Enrique? Thank you. My name is Enrique Messner. I'm the Director of Privacy at EMEA um, at eBay. We actually use the Transparency and Consent Framework and have our own private CMP. No, Alex? Hi, I'm Alex Cohn, Vice President of Privacy and Data Protection at IAB Tech Lab, and I currently uh, lead the working groups that are thinking about the technical specifications for supporting TCF going forward. And previously, in another life, I worked on bringing TCF V2 to, to life as one of the, the member companies of IB Europe. So super excited to talk about it today. Great. No, ben Hi, thank you, Nino. Hi to everyone. I'm Benoit, the founder and CEO of Sordata, an addressability company acting within the TCF as a vendor, of course, but also as a CMP editor. And I'm very excited as well, like Alex and everyone, to be here today. So thank you so much. And finally, Casey. And thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here today. My name is Casey Hill. I'm with OneTrust. We deal in privacy, risk, and, and governance. And in support of TCF, I work on our CMP product and sit on a number of the, the different IB working groups and also chair the Signals Working Group. I'm really excited for today's discussion. Thanks. That's great. And thank you so much for being here. So yesterday, Interact session was dedicated to policy and data protection. And so it was mentioned um, that there are still uh, disruptances in interpretation by DPAs uh, of the e-privacy directive and the GDPR. So this remains a pain point um, to make uh, TCF a simple and pan-European instrument. And uh, Junia, do you think that the variances in interpretation will disappear over time and which areas of uh, TCF could as a result be further uh, standardized? Uh, yes, thank you, Nino, for the question. At the beginning, when we started all the conversation about TCF, I was less optimistic than I am now. Uh, and now for the future, I'm more positive also. We see also a change in the approach of the Data Protection Authority, if you think about it. Now there is more dialogue also between them. And I hope also that all the discussion that we will have about the privacy regulation that is now I think more at the horizon than, than before, we will have some changes. And I hope also for the more important conversation like about cookie walls and the use of legitimate interest that, you, that were the main issues and the main point that were different between DPAs until today. With the privacy regulation, we will see and an harmonization between all the countries. And finally, we will have a European level for data protection. Yeah, I agree that the e privacy regulation will provide a more uh, consistent framework. 
Enrique, do you actually anticipate any changes in TCF adoption following the um, replacement of the privacy directive by the regulation? Yes, definitely. And that relates to what Julia just said in terms of the harmonization of the rules across Europe. The, and the transparency and consent framework will likely evolve with those changes also and make sure that the standard is harmonized and yeah, in line with the evolving laws and the interpretation thereof that will certainly be more harmonized in the future with the e-privacy regulation. In practice, there are also other developments, and we have seen that over the last uh, years, that pushed an increase in adoption, such as the Planet 49 ruling, or where regulators announced that they start enforcement action. I think we've seen similar developments in the past, and I think the e-privacy regulation will give it another push. Yeah, and we see that currently TCF adoption is um, lower in countries where the oversight of the privacy directive is placed with the telecom regulatory body. So it's likely to, to increase once the regulation replaces the directive and is automatically placed uh, with national data protection authorities. Moving on now to the technical challenges uh, faced by the industry, starting with the deprecation of third-party cookies by Chrome, so yesterday, Moïse Slow from the CNIL provided a, an overview of which mechanisms require consent when they are used for um, advertising purposes. But Benoit, in your views, uh, what legal requirements supported by uh, TCF are applicable to, to alternative to, to third-party cookies? Um, well, thank you, Nino. I think the best way to answer this question is to focus on the alternatives themselves. Um, so far, I heard about different possibilities. Uh, a few remain, rely on an access to the device, either because they use first-party cookies, either because they use uh, any ability uh, to store and access something within the device, either they may use, for example, a, use, um, a user ID generated by the device himself, itself. And in Europe, that's quite simple. If you need to access to this kind of ID, you need a consent. Even if the ID itself or the information stored isn't a personal information, you need a consent. That's because of the privacy directive. Then you have different possibilities to track a user or to track performance from advertising, for example, relying on other identifiers, not generated or stored within the device, but let's say maybe the IP address, which will require a legal basis because they definitely are personal data. And under the GDPR, which is the other regulation, we need a legal basis to process it. So far, I, don't, I didn't hear about a new kind of identifier. So whatever the solution proposed and adopted by the market, I think the current TCF under the V2 current, currently used standard is already ready for these uh, alternatives. Thanks. And Alex, how do you think TCF can support the, the solutions that are going to be more commonly used by, uh, by publishers? Yeah, good question. I think all along, from the technical design to the policy design that the, the tech spec supports, the TCF has been agnostic to the form of how you would collect or activate data. And I think that's really important because I see a lot of solutions popping up right now that, okay, we're a new identity solution. We need for this particular identity solution, we need a control center for this identity solution. And the, the fact is, is like users don't have any sort of conception of the underlying technology that might enable some sort of outcome that's driven by user data, whether it's frequency capping or like targeting or attribution and measurement. And because all of those identity solutions that are out there, whether it is something that's provided by the device or a commercial entity are really enabling those outcomes. The TCF is, as Benoit said, like the GDPR is about legal basis for data processing purposes. Like you've come up with generic data processing purposes that represent what we do. And I think in as much as the new technologies enable those 
data processing purposes. It, the technology or the specification and the policy of TCF like applies. And just one more thing to add to that is, at least from the technical side, and I also think honestly, from how the policy is written, the, it, it might require us to evolve in the future, but even I think about devices like operating systems, browsers that are building these new advertising APIs in the name of privacy, even they could be ultimately the tech spec for TCF is almost agnostic to where you might initiate a signal that goes through the supply chain. So I think it's really well poised because it was designed agnostically to the identity technology that's enabling data processing purposes. And just because in general, like a signaling technology can work at any level of where you might collect uh, information from a user, provide transparency to a user. It's really well poised in my view to be something that folks rely on for transparency and control for all of these new solutions that publishers and other digital properties will rely on. Yes. And I think, yeah, it's important to, to say that TCF is a tech neutral and intends to remain tech neutral. Casey, what role can consent management platforms take in this new addressability landscape? For example, can they be uh, combined with sign-on components, for example, to support identity solutions? Yeah, ab absolutely. I think it goes back to a lot of what Alex was saying in terms of, I think CMP's role in this is to make the appropriate disclosures and explanations about what sorts of processing is occurring and who those various players are, and then act as arbiter and, and the control center for relaying those signals downstream. And I look at more holistically how CMPs also need to really view and act as a, a way to ensure that the end consumer data subject understands the value add from a, whether it be publisher or other perspective, and really just make that information known so that then you can take that end consumer along a journey so that um, they can understand how um, you actually work as a business and operate. And then within that, you can understand how you might actually really move a user onto being a known user by, for example, like you said, logging in with a identity solution and really combining that and and making sure it's known on their behalf as to why they would want to log in. So for example, they get, whether it's relevant news that they might want or store preferences so that when they transfer from their phone to the web, those are stored. But part of what the CMPs really need to do is act as that sort of uh, go between so that you can more clearly understand as an end consumer what's actually happening so that you do know and you do actually uh, are actively doing something where you understand those choices and, and are appropriately signaling them downstream. Yes, and I think that indeed the, the user journey is um, extremely important. And another um, technical disruption faced by the industry has been the Apple app tracking transparency feature that has been reading on, released on iOS. And it shows a clear um, misalignment uh, between end user agents and publisher on the ownership of users' um, privacy choices. Enrique, do you see TCF evolving to support interoperability or at least better consensus between publishers and end user agents when it comes to user um, privacy choices? Yeah, I clearly see the TCF evolving there. I even think it's a necessity. These different frameworks result in, in a very fragmented and complex and confusing user experience for the end user. They have different scopes, they use different definitions, so it's super complex for the user to understand. From a publisher perspective, also it's super difficult to implement it the right way for the users, because it starts with the easy question like, what, which one, which prompt to show first? And then you have probably questions coming up. Okay, if one answer is yes and the other answer is no, what does that mean for a specific use case? So it, it makes it really complicated to navigate through those different frameworks. And so I think in the spirit of transparency for the end user and promoting a single place where, where, where they can make their choices, I think it's really critical that the TCF evolves and helps 
streamline all those different uh, choices. Yes, and the cases of switching from iOS to, to CTV uh, operating system, uh, do you think that leveraging TCF in the CTV environment can prevent a unilateral decision from CTV OS, for example, to restrict access to, to users that are implement additional choices that are not aligned with, with TCF? Yeah, so I think it goes to what you've said and, and also what Alex has said about TCF is really agnostic to the, the platform. And that's important to remember because it also harkens back to the, the identity piece a little bit in that as an end consumer, I don't necessarily always understand or know when I make a choice here in this one particular space that that choice isn't relayed, especially if it's an example where I'm a logged in user, I actually expect it to transfer if I'm dealing with one individual entity. And so I think it's very important as we think about CTV and, and OTT devices that we do take a common approach across the various platforms, because one thing that I do start to understand as an end consumer is commonality between what those choices are. And then if I can be relayed that information repeatedly in a concise fashion, where I start to understand what those controls are, then it can start to shape and, and make my view of the overall industry a much more positive one. And I think that's important to remember and is really one of the things that's very good about leveraging TCF for really being that arbiter of how those signals get relayed between the various brands that you interact with and downstream vendors. Yes, and hopefully we will uh, soon see the impact of putting forward a consensus-based standard for transparency and consent as we see more and more CTV publishers within their app. There are also more and more uh, CMPs that are validated for uh, CTV, including OneTrust. We are also starting to see TCF adoption by advertisers. You as advertisers are more and more aware of the requirement of the e privacy directive and the GDPR and what role can play national IABs um, in driving TCF adoption. I think it, it was something that no one, no one expected at the beginning because uh, usually advertisers are more focused on imposing guarantees on the publisher, on the agency, on the vendors and, uh, and not looking on, on their own properties. So these changes was something that was uh, really unexpected and I think uh, was most driving, of course, for a more aware awareness in general on those kind of topics. And on the other hand, for sure, there was also some decisions that brought uh, some attention and some scare also in on advertiser and uh, I think the main reason now is the cookieless era that is coming that is scaring uh, advertiser now and uh, they are now more focused on their first party data and investing on their data and starting to think about how to collect consent. Also, when we, we were talking about now all the identity solution, for those solutions, they need to be ready and to collect their consent on their first party data in order to start with those kind of adoption. And uh, I think national IEIBs has, are, have a crucial role now because they have, uh, of course, to spread awareness and also they have to explain better now than before that the framework is not just for experts, but it's for anyone that wants to collect user data and to be more transparent uh, with uh, their users and uh, with their clients and customers and so on. Yeah, I think that uh, TCF has, uh, has been seen as a standard bringing efficiency only to websites or apps that are selling ads but not necessarily other properties that still process personal data for advertising purposes and the role of national IAB is indeed really important and to drive the adoption. I know that IAB at Italy has already done a great job educating the market on TCF because we see an increase of 40% uh, of the TCF adoption in Italy since, uh, since September. Our next topic is the IAB Tech Lab accountability platform. So was development is led by Alex. It will enable the auditing of ad-related transactions, including to ensure that users' privacy choices are forwarded faithfully and observed. 
Alexa will the platform uh, support TCF and help to build uh, trust um, between participants? Yeah, so I, I would just say that as we've been designing the technical specification for accountability platform, the, the TCF, I, I use the term like is the canonical example, but like the base case that we seek to support in that TCF is currently leading globally as a standard framework for transparency and like choice or transparency and control signaling through a supply chain. So in as much as the wide scale of adoption that TCF has, I think it will be the first place for accountability platform to really prove itself will be on transactions where there's a TC string, the signal that, you know, carries the encoded version of what's been shown to user and choices that they've made. And as you mentioned, like the way that this accountability platform is designed to work is to say, hey, let's collect some transactional data from participants in the supply, across the supply chain in a standardized format, including the string that has the encoded like signal of any choices that a user might've made and show that for a transaction across the supply chain and make that data available in its standardized form to any kind of entity, whether it's IB Europe running a vendor compliance program, or it's a DPA that wants to do analysis on whether or not they think the supply chain entities are actually forwarding along and also respecting choices or conforming to those choices that are made, or what's been shown to a user. I'm really excited about like actually <laughs> having Europe be a, an early test case in whether or not what we've designed can fulfill that mission. And if it can't, like, then we keep building towards it. But I think that the best place to start is going to be Europe because there's just such scale of already having these signals that are being passed along through the supply chain where I think we'll have enough data and, and the folks that will do analysis with this data that is made available, like can, can actually start to determine, yes, we do believe that the signal is making its way through, it's not being tampered with. And in as much as the current version of accountability platform allows for it, we can see whether entities are conforming to that. If, if they're not supposed to send something on down the line to a certain vendor, you could actually see that they are. So in terms of an identifier or something like that. So anyway, really excited actually to see uh, accountability platform take off once we have it launched and folks start adopting it in Europe, because I think TCF, like I said, is, is <laughs> so broadly adopted that I think we can actually see, we'll be able to see a lot of really great data. Yes. And, and as you mentioned, so this outcome data is intended to be used to support buttons by data protection authority, should they want to audit compliance of certain companies. And audit is a focus of concern for European DPAs, as well as civil society organization. And um, Benoit, do you think that this self-regulatory form of accountability will help answering the concerns um, of DPAs and ultimately policymakers? Of course. Um... In France, currently, we are supposed to provide a real, real simple choice to the users. Either they can say yes to the cookies, either they can say no. Surprisingly, 70% of them say yes. It's our chance. We provide transparency about what we want to do, what we aim to do. Then they can have a real choice. The next step for sure is to, to provide transparency about what we actually do. Do we respect the user choices or not is the key for all the DPAs and for all the users and of course different as associations. But not only, you mentioned the different people representing these users, European DPTs. We have a big risk in Europe. You probably heard about different new regulation, the privacy regulation, the DSA, the DMA, from time to time, and more and more, we hear about forbidding personalized advertising. Not forbidding cookies, not forbidding data processing, but simply forbidding uh, personalized advertising. If we want to fight against that, 
we need to provide transparency about what we actually do. That's the key. Uh, in my opinion, of course, that's the key. So yes, of course, it will help. Thank you for the question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, and it fits well perfectly with the um, GDPR accountability principle. So yeah, deploying this standardized technical safeguard will strengthen the ability of companies to, of all sizes to demonstrate and improve their, their compliance, whether it's with uh, DPAs, but also users and consumers. So let's now move to the questions uh, from the audience. The first one I think is for Enrique. So what additional controls would you like to see from a publisher perspective that could support publishers' implementation beyond uh, the user experience? Yeah, that's a good one. I think sometimes it's difficult to make it digestible for users. So maybe less is actually more and to have, I don't know, to have a, a version to make it even more concise for users. One other thing I, that just comes to my mind is that users often struggle to understand the chain, like the downstream flow of data. Maybe if there would be a, a way to somehow yeah, explain it to the user within the framework, I think that could also be something very useful for publishers to, to explain that actually it's not going to all these vendors, but it's maybe going to one and then down the chain. And um, Julia, do you want to have some uh, thoughts, maybe from your members? Or... I, I, I completely agree with Enrique, and I think the point on uh, explaining them how is working the flow is something that is very important. Otherwise, if you think about it also, the most simple processing activity, like, I don't know, the retargeting or uh, something like that, that's something maybe the user can understand uh, seeing an advertising because he knows that he went on that website, but he doesn't understand that he, he see that advertising because he was on that, that website uh, and the tracking was with cookies. So when we talk about transparency, it's not just uh, an abstract concept, it's something that is very practical. and. Uh, also, if you think uh, when the GDPR speaks about having uh, images also within the privacy policies, it's something that is very important for the user because it's something that is like the signals in the street when uh, there is like the, the red light, you cannot cross the street. And so when you have some symbols, you understand that there will be a tracking done on the website that um, entails, for example, like no retargeting. It's something, some, this is this, some discussion that we have for years now but I hope in the future we will have something more practical to, to show to the user. Yes. Another question for Alex. So what is the time frame for IAB Text Lab Accountability Initiative? Yeah, so I will start by saying I do not have a specific date at this point. I can What I can tell you is that we have gone through a period of public comment on the design that ended towards the beginning of May. And we're now working through the feedback that we received during uh, public comment, plus one or two really big items that we had identified that weren't really resolved. So my hope is that going into, going into Q3, so going into July, that we could have uh, a finalized specification so that's the goal. Uh, I, I think we could be done sooner, but I think it, you know, everyone is very busy. I think right now with working groups, because there is so much change going on in our ecosystem that we're all competing for limited time. We do have a really solid group of folks that are helping there, but yeah, I don't have a specific date. My hope is to have uh, a finalized specification in like going into Q3. So sometime in July is my hope. Thanks. Question, I think, for Benoit. Um, is TCF also applicable to girls' privacy sandbox and receivability solution? How does that look like from a CMP UX perspective? Well, I think we should ask to Google, <laughs> but I, I don't see why not. Theoretically, it should be possible. It could be and will be possible, but they are free to join or not join the initiative for this specific activity. 
for now, Google advertising solution joined the TCF, but Chrome is, as far as another, another department of Google. So maybe they would join, maybe not. Again, I think they could. It would be a good solution. And in such a case, I would assume that uh, they could join either in the same time as a CMP and as uh, a vendor, because obviously the choice the user would have would be at the browser level. So there would be at some point uh, a need to converge transparency and choice signaling with the main ability provided to the user to accept or refuse any advertising proposed within the browser. The first step would be probably to discuss about the CMP converging uh, ability and then the signaling the different IDs, Flock ID, for example, sharing with different vendors, so acting as a vendor as well. That would be my guess, but again, I cannot really answer for them. Yeah, thanks. And maybe just a point of clarification. So for entities that are going to use uh, those API, will they be able to rely on TCF to do? Yeah, yes, of course. Again, there's no difference between accessing a flock ID within an API and an ID stored in a cookie or whatever, or even a, a, an Android ID, it's a device access. So they need a, a consent for that. And that's covered by the proposed one within the TCF. That's my guess. Thank you. So there is a, another question about the CNILS um, guidelines. Is there any compatibility issue with TCF? I think I might ask you to answer this one. No, not at all. No. That's one of the nice things within TCF is within TCF one, one of the things is we really got a ton of feedback from publishers, DPAs, and took into account the various concerns of areas where we need to expand flexibility for how TCF could operate. And within TCF two, I feel that we did that. And there's things like publisher restrictions that allow you as a publisher and as a CMP to ensure that you meet requirements such as the canals so that you can do things, ensure the granularity is there, ensure the appropriate consent is there. And so the, those are the types of things that TCF accounted for within this second iteration of it. And there is compatibility there. And part of really a CMP's role, in, in my opinion, is to really consult on behalf of the publishers and ensure that the publishers fully understand that it's a framework. It's flexible across various member states and it does um, have the capabilities to expand into areas even outside of the EU. And I know that's one area that, that we get feedback from too, is people want to take TCF and they want to move it to like APAC because they say that actually covers additional laws on top of just what's in Europe. And so I think it's important to remember that as a CMP, one, yes, it's important to know these things. And two, it's important for you to be able to explain them to your, your publishers to ensure that they're meeting the guidance in particular countries. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. So I think that we can now close this panel, but thank you uh, very much for being here today. And I will now hand over to Constantine for the rest of the event. Thank you so much, Nino, and uh, let me add my thankings also to, to Alex, to Julia, to Casey, to Enrique, and to Benoit for a very enlightening discussion on the near future of TCF within the context of poster party cookies, but also in terms of supporting compliance to new environments such as connected TV. And we all very much look forward